yeah, my path to addiction. So I'm too, uh, like Tommy, I'm from uh, Long Island. But I've been in L.A. for <clears throat> about 23 years now and uh, come from a long line of drug addicts and alcoholics. I think it's just in my genes, you know. And um, so I kind of, you know, I grew up around it and uh, it just was kind of the norm for me. And just from a very early age, I was always kind of intrigued by the darker side of life. It just seemed exciting and fun and uh, doing things that I wasn't or was told that I wasn't supposed to do just as, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do those things. It just seems fun. So um, <clears throat> I started doing drugs when I was about 12, you know, typical smoking weed at first and drinking and whatnot, which quickly, quickly progressed to, you know, cocaine, speed, ecstasy. Um, then I had my first taste of opiates, like TJ, with Vicodin, and uh, just found exactly what I was looking for. It just felt like, I've always described it as, um, when I found opiates, it felt like I found home. It just made me, it's what I was looking for. And um, <laughs> so once I had a taste for the opiates, I just knew that one day I was going to actively seek out heroin. That day eventually came, and... Um, I started acting when I was nine, and things went really well for me from the start. So from about nine to 21, I had really good things going on, and uh, like Tommy, started making a pretty decent amount of money, and a lot of money in heroin addiction just is a, a bad combo. Um, so at about 21, I just completely lost all touch with myself and reality and made heroin my absolute number one priority and uh, literally lost everything. I lost my career, I lost all of my money, I lost possessions, lost everything. Most importantly, I lost myself. Like, I felt like I'd lost my soul. And it started doing things to get money for dope that I just never would have thought I would be capable of. Um, <clears throat> and that continued for a long time. I quickly progressed into a street level, skid row dwelling, um, kind of thuggish heroin addict. Um, and we what, got the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the role that I play in the movie is not far from who I was at that point in my life. Um, what kind of opened my eyes and got me out of that scene um, where these guys met me at, at an AA meeting? I, I reached a really, really low point and um, had a failed suicide attempt because I just could see no way out of my addiction. Obviously, suicide attempt didn't work. Um, and I was in a serious relationship with a girl uh, at this time in my life who was also an addict. I had an intervention pulled on me by some very close friends, and I was sent off to detox and rehab. Once I got to rehab, I moved to a lower level of care and went out to visit my girlfriend at the time who had stayed home while I went away and found her dead from a, a drug overdose. And um, it was... It is the most heartbreaking situation I've ever experienced in my life up until this point. And this is, ha you know, this happened in 08, and, you know, we're well beyond 08 now. Um, and I was just like, you know what, this is fucking bullshit. This life is bullshit, and, and I can't keep doing this anymore. So, um, you know, just really immersed myself in recovery and met these guys at this meeting. And we all became, you know, I love these guys. They're, you know, my friends. They've been my friends for a while. So, yeah, that's, that's you know... A little bit, a little bit of my story. <laughs>